from 2014. Hundreds of millions of tweets over just one soccer match, but it was an unusual match. By way of contrast, Netherlands versus Argentina did not get the same coverage as Germany versus Brazil. But then, Germany spanked Brazil 7-1 in front of a home crowd for Brazil. It doesn't get more upsetting in world sport anywhere. The result is career-changing for all involved. Netherlands beat Spain 5-1 earlier in the tournament, tournament, but it did not carry on with that form. Germany have done well, but need to maintain it to win the tournament. That is their goal. Today is the anniversary of an equivalent match as Argentina versus Netherlands has been. 48 BC had Julius Caesar pitted against Pompey at Battle of Diratium. It was precipitous and Caesar risked all by accident, but nothing happened as two heavyweights faced off. Technically, Pompey won, and so he went to face Caesar again at Pharsalus with all the advantages, yet lost everything. What had happened was Caesar had sailed to Duratium through an enemy force in winter and got trapped with a much smaller force that could not resupply. Mark Antony marched into his aid and Pompey moved to prevent the reuniting. The upshot was that Pompey had a force behind fortifications and Caesar chose to starve him out by building more fortifications. Pompey had sea access to supplies but could not feed his livestock. Caesar's men were hungry, but when spring came, Caesar could hold all the advantages. Pompey broke out of his enclosure and marched to Pharsalus. How will Argentina fare against Germany? How will Brazil against Netherlands? So much has happened, but the future is uncertain, and anything might prove all the difference. Also, on this day, but in the year 645, was the Ishii incident in Japan which transformed Japan and involved their honor system in a way that seems incomprehensible if one is not Japanese. Two princes, Nakatomi no Kamatari and Prince Naka no Oi, conspired to kill a third, Soga no Iruka. The attack took place in front of Empress Kogyoku during a court ceremony. Iruka was not killed during the first attack, but pleaded his case to the Empress, who retired to consider it. A second attack in front of the Empress finished Iruka and put the Empress in a difficult position. She was unclean because of the murder in her presence. So she stepped aside, but not for the killer, but his older brother. The killer became a monk. And, after a few reigns, Emperor. It was a family affair, much like that of a big family of soccer fans watching the events unfold in the World Cup. Also, on this day, Lady Jane Grey took the throne of England in 1553. It was not a blessing for her, and neither was it a blessing when Richard Neville defeated Lancastrian forces of Henry VI in 1460. The Valor Mutiny against the British East India Company happened on this day in 1806, but the Sepoys had to wait another 142 years to see independence for India. U.S. Democrat President Andrew Jackson moved to kill the second U.S. bank in 1832, setting in train a position of inept fiscal rectitude all Democrat presidents have followed. Death Valley recorded a temperature of 57 degrees centigrade in 1913. It has been cooler ever since. In 1997, scientists reported DNA analysis of a Neanderthal man that favored the out-of-Africa theory for human development, with an Eve existing 100 to 200,000 years ago. She was a good woman who liked kids. Born on this day was John Calvin in 1509, Nikola Tesla in 1856, Marcel Proust in 1871, Harvey Ball, 1921, Jake LaMotta, 1921, Harlow Guthrie, 1941, and Sunil Gavaskar, in 1949. That's it for today. If you come by this video at a later date and you like it, like it! Also, feel free to comment and share. Spread the love. Be well.